All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Chum Chat. Um, me and Tana had already recorded one, but we had to scratch that. So this is going to be our first episode of 2022. Um, we have a special, special guest. He doesn't need any introduction, but USL player, the Young Player of the Year nominee this last year, and I think the year before that, uh, USL All-Second Team, San Antonio FC player, or maybe former San, San Antonio FC player, Jose Gallegos. Thanks for joining us, brother. No, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. And uh, for our for our people who haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications, and um, just continue to show love. We love uh, go show us love on Instagram. Go show love uh, to Jose on Instagram. Our editor will pop up his Instagram and Twitter on the screen. And uh, and yeah, but first of all, let's just reflect on this 2021 season you had, man. What was it? Seven goals, four assists. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, seven goals, That's four assists. Yeah, that's not bad. But you lost to the eventual champion Orange County in the playoffs. How was that? Nah, man, that was tough. Cause obviously they're they I didn't think they were favorites going into the playoffs. Um, I think they surprised everybody in the league. Um, I think we were favorites going into that game, just so how we were, you know, running uh up to towards that game. And uh they were just really good defensively, honestly. Like uh I think the best defensive team we played all year. And I think that's what helped them. We get to the final and, and eventually win. But um I think from from our point of view, our our season, you know, I think we had a great season. We started rough, and then later on, you know, we picked up that our rhythm and and uh, we ended up doing not too bad. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, y'all are a solid team. You put up solid numbers. So, I mean, I don't know what more you can ask for. It's been uh it was a great year last year for you. But I think we should talk about twenty twenty two. Here on Trump Chat, we always talk about success, how you define it, certain things. We'll get to that, but. We want to ask you, what are your goals for 2022 look like for you? Uh, every year, just do better than what I did last year, man. Just trying to get to higher levels also, you know. Um, I think everybody's goal is to get to Europe at a certain point, just like uh, just like anybody else. So, uh, yeah, that's the main goal, man, seeing uh, where it goes from here. I think I've done, you know, my third time in San Antonio. It's It's been it's been good. They the ones that give me the stage to to do to showcase what I what I've done, and um, yeah, it's just seeing where to next and um, where it could help me the, uh, the most in my career. Yeah, bro. Actually, that's uh, one of the before I move on to like kind of that Europe stuff and, and stuff like that. Um, one of the fans actually asked what your preferred position is because you're good at the ten, um, but a lot of teams don't play with the ten. Do you do you like playing out wide or do you see yourself maybe dropping down to an eight? You know, or, or or what do you think? What do you think you can reach your full potential as, or what's your favorite to play? Yeah, I think uh, mostly I just played ten my my whole life. I just played as a ten, um, but I I love playing on the wing also because you're just so free to do you know what you want, take on players, you know, be more creative. I think you can be creative as a ten too, but I feel like you're more free to do that as a winger because as a ten, there's more, I guess, focus on you in the middle. Um, but I've also played as a eight, um, I think my second season here in San Antonio and I didn't do too bad. It's just not the preferred position I want for myself. I think I do better as a 10 or, or as a winger, but yeah, I've, I've mostly always just played as a 10. And I think I prefer that also. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I think it's a, it's a position that suits you, but also like a lot of people are saying that the 10 is like dying or whatever it may be, because a lot of teams are playing with like a double eight now, like a four, three, three. So, I yeah. mean, I don't know. It is tough, but um, you trialed, um, I think, with uh, with Bayern, or did you try, or was it just kind of like a training stint? Uh, I think like a training stint, honestly. Um, when was that? It was, I'd say it was a trial, actually. I'd say it was a trial. That was like beginning of uh, 2020, like March around. Um, yeah, I think it was just by, you know, just by the name Bayern Munich, just the you know, one of the biggest clubs, if not the biggest in the world. So me just being there training was was crazy enough. Um, uh, yeah, I was there for a week, almost two weeks. Um, and it was just fucking surreal, man. Like just being there like and, and seeing players that I've seen on TV um, was crazy. And me being because I was training with the second team. I was training with the second team and you just see the the there's levels to this and um, it was good to be in that environment and 
um, yeah, I just enjoyed it, man, overall. Hey, bro, I, I, I can tell you there's levels to this. I, I, I can totally agree with that, bro. It's, it's, there's different levels in, in each part of, 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 uh, of the world in, in, in terms of soccer and, and different levels to each, each country as well. And I, I, I guarantee John can attest to that too uh, with being in Germany and, and then also being in Portugal. But, yeah, man, it's, it's a different level, bro. It's a different level for sure, especially being in Europe. Bayern, I mean, Bayern's second team is, I mean, I'm sure they're quality. But uh, was Chris there? Did at you that feel? Time? Was that Chris Richards? For sure was Chris was there. Richards there at that time? Uh, no, he wasn't. It was Justin. Shea. Okay, okay. Oh, the, Justin was like, there. The one that would like help me out because I didn't. It's crazy, man, because you go to a place like that and then everybody's like speaking a different language and you're just like, what? Like you're trying to keep up. Like we were being training and. Obviously, the coach is speaking German, and he knows I only know English and, and speak Spanish. But um, I guess you just got to – when you go to a place like that, you got to – they want you to pick up the language as quick as you can. And I was there, and Justin was the one, like, always, like, translating for me and trying to help me out. So – because, yeah, I know he, he knew German a bit, so I, that would help me out yeah. a lot too. So, yeah. yeah, it's honestly, though, like, uh, for me being in Italy now uh, – like if you hang out with somebody that knows the language, it's honestly not good for you because you're just like, oh, what they say or you'll tell them this or whatever, but you don't ever actually like learn for yourself. So when you do make the move to Europe in due time, you got to you got to try it for yourself and, and really push yourself because it's honestly nice. I mean, you're you're Duolingo. So is Johan. He's learning other languages as well. But I wish I, I spoke more languages, bro, like going up to America, nobody, I mean, you take Spanish class or you take French class, whatever, but you never really speak it outside. So yeah, man, I wish I knew uh, more language, but it's coming. It's coming 2022. Yeah. I'm going to be fluent in Italian. So. <laughs> hey, that's too calm. But moving on to another, another question that someone asked, um, shout out Jack. He said, where in Europe do you want to play? Like what's the perfect situation right now for you? Maybe a long-term and short-term now, like, where would you, where do you see yourself? Maybe you can take that as like, what kind of, what league do you want to play in or what team? I don't know. Yeah. Just interpret it how you want. Yeah, man, I think anywhere is ideal right now. Honestly, in Europe, um, I think that that's where all the eyes are at. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've gone to Germany and that was awesome. I think that's been big for U.S. players. Um, I think the big ones that everybody, everybody looks at, I think is like Germany, Spain, Portugal, even Belgium. Belgium's like really good too. I saw. Cuevas had just gone to Bruges. Um, and that's like a solid club to start at. Um, shit, man. There's a dog barking right now. It's the neighbor's dog, my bad. No worries, no worries. Yeah, yeah you're all but, good. Uh, yeah, any of those teams, that, any of those countries, I think is going be massive. Honestly. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think, honestly, uh, like somewhere like Portugal, Spain, I mean, even Germany, like you said, I mean, you already – you got, you got to see with Bayern and stuff like that, you know, how it is. But um, you're, you've are you been in USL, you know, the U.S. You know, we got some – someone asked this, and I don't know if it's true. Um, do you have, have you had any contact with FC Dallas or um, any MLS teams in general? Maybe that's not the ambition, but have you had any contact yeah. with them? Um, I Not that I know of, honestly. Not FC Dallas, but I have been in contact with MLS clubs. Um, obviously, that's not the – you know, main goal for myself right now, but yeah, there's been contacts with, with a couple of MLS clubs and um, I, it's funny because I speak to my parents about that and my dad, like, eventually, like, he hears, like, what the the money there and he's like, oh yeah, MLS, MLS. I'm like, nah, you're not seeing, like, the big picture. Like, I gotta, like, first, I want to start my, you know, that journey in Europe. So my dad's just like, he hears, like, how much they're offering and he's like, yeah, I think you need to go there, but he's just not thinking, like, I don't know how I, I guess I think of it. Cause he, he doesn't know much about soccer like that either. He doesn't, he's never really played and uh, he only watches like the games when I play and stuff like that. So it's, it's kind of yeah. funny when I bring up the MLS clubs soon. That's crazy low key. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I figured, I mean, it might be a little bit stereotypical, but you're obviously Mexican American living in San Antonio. I just figured your dad or at least like someone in your family was like crazy about soccer. You know what I mean? I mean, that's how I grew up. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what everybody tells me, too. Like, yeah, my both of my parents never played soccer. I think any sport, honestly. The only one that got me into it was my older brother. And he got me in really young because he, he started playing late, like at 12 years old. Um, and he got pretty good uh, in a short amount of time. And, um, yeah, at like four, three years old, he started 
you know, practicing with me and uh, he's the one that showed me how to kick a ball and, and all of that. So, yeah, props goes to him. Wow. I just want to take a little break to shout out our sponsor, BET Online. Um, it's the fastest, easiest way to bet on any kind of sports. Obviously, you can bet on the NFL playoffs right now, Champions League coming up, any of that online. Use our promo code to believe, B-L-E-A-V, for 50% off on your first purchase online. Yeah, shout out BET Online for presenting it. And uh, let's get back to the interview. So, yeah, someone was asking if you were born and raised in San Antonio. Yeah, yeah, I was born and raised in San Antonio. My parents are from Mexico. Uh, my dad from Durango, my mom from Chihuahua. But, uh, yeah, I've always just been in Mexico, I mean, in San Antonio. Um, so that's crazy to me, actually, because how have we never played each other? You've been in the San, San Antonio yeah. um, setup, like, throughout your whole career? Yeah, yeah. We we, we would play against uh, FC Dallas. I remember you would play for them. Uh, who else? Thomas Roberts was there. But they were Classics Elite, though, at one point. Classics Elite, yeah, we were Classics Elite. Okay, so you did play for them. Yeah, I did, yeah. Okay, so that's I, crazy. That means we did play against each other, I guess. Yeah, we did. We did. It was you. I think it was you, Thomas. Who else was on that team? Uh, Reynolds. Yeah, Brian. Brian. Brian and I think his Bro, brother. Yeah, I used to on. play on some trash fields, though. No. <laughs> Those fields are garbage. No, they, they were pretty garbage. Not gonna lie. It wasn't until, like, because uh, we were. it was Scorpions back, back then, before San Antonio FC. They were called Scorpions. Yeah. And that's when they had the academy. And then once, once they, I think they have enough money to support the academy or something. Um, the, sh- the fields just started getting shit. So, yeah. But did you did you I, play with Carson Price? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Tanner lived with Carson. I knew Carson. <laughs> yeah, I live with Carson. Carson. Oh, and, um, yeah, yeah, Carson, man. He's an idiot. Carson's funny, <laughs> bro. He was always Carson's playing. Up. Like, yeah, he was always playing up. I don't think he's at Charlotte right now, but, yeah, he's funny, man. Carson. Uh, and Roel. I think Roel went there. Or Roel, I don't know if you know yeah. Roel. Yeah, Roel Peña. Yeah, yeah, bro. He, he was he there first, and then came to FC Dallas. Or he was at FC Dallas, and then went there. I don't remember. No, no, he was he was uh he was here first, and then he went to, with the odds FC Dallas, and from there I think he went to, uh, I think Leon in Mexico. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he was always he was always messing around, man. He would always get in trouble and stuff. But that's crazy, bro. That's crazy. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, we played against each other a couple times then. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I remember we were. We were doing pretty good in the league, and then we played y'all, and we would get smacked, bro. We get smacked like four zero, <laughs> and it was like, damn, bro, like we were about to go first place, and then it's always like y'all in first place. It was like y'all, Dallas Texans, and us, like top three around there. Yeah, but, it was hard yeah. to play over there. Like we'd always like, Dan wasn't there at that point yet when you guys were still in the league, but we would play y'all, but it would always be so hard because their their fields are so bad, you couldn't yeah. play, bro. So we always win by like one goal or two goals. But just because the fields are so bad, it was, like, impossible to play. But anyway. Yeah. Someone asked, did you play in high school? Yeah, I played high school all four so years. So that's kind of crazy because not a lot of people yeah. now that's have wild, the success bro. that you've had and play high school. Um, yeah. I think You, you had to be the greatest high like school South player last year, for real. <laughs> yeah. How was that, bro? Wow. Like, how, how do you think bro. that worked, like, helped nah, your how, development? Let me ask uh, a question, though. How, how did you go from, like, you playing in high school? with these guys that literally are in math class, like they're playing yeah. soccer for fun, like not taking yeah. it serious, the level, the coaching, like what they're telling you to do, the atmosphere. And then you switch like the next day, like every day you're doing this, you switch to San Antonio where you have a professional game, you have packed stadiums, you have fans going crazy. It's a whole different lifestyle. How, how did you manage that, bro? I mean, honestly, bro, uh, I don't know. Cause obviously the level is nowhere near um, at that pro level. But the thing that helped me is also I was playing club. So that would help me, you know, kind of maintain, uh, you know, a good level. Um, but I was playing high school. It wasn't even public school. It was private school. So, like, even then the level drops even more down. Um, but I think it was just fun because it's high school, man. Like, everybody, you know, your friends go there, everything. And uh, the, the, we were a good team. So, um, yeah, we won state, like, all four years. Um <laughs> It was just on it. We got like, I got a ring for every year. So it was just like, it was just like obviously a bonus, like just getting a ring and uh, all of that. But it was, it was tough, honestly, maintaining the level because I was, I would play with high school and then I'd go to class. Like, I'd have three classes a day. So I would train in the morning with San Antonio and then I'd go to class for three classes. Um, 
And then I think I might, I would also train with the club after. So it was like kind of, it was hard to maintain all of that, bro. Cause also homework and I wasn't always the smartest guy. So it was just tough overall, honestly. Bro, I'm so not going to lie. Man. I'm not going to lie. I saw, I saw this man's, I saw someone was hyping him up and it was his high school highlights. And you know, like just a stereotype, like I saw him. Yeah. And um, I was like, oh, okay. He's good for like, he plays high school. Yeah. You can't yeah. like judge it. Yeah, exactly. And then I swear, like the next day he was playing for San Antonio or something like that. And he like was doing against pros. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess he's legit. You know, like, I just feel like you came out of nowhere. Like you just yeah. came from like a high school player to like San Antonio. Like all of a sudden you're trialing for Bayern Munich and like looking at things abroad, which is crazy. And you're, you got called into the national team. Also yeah. U20, which um I don't, I don't know if a lot of people know that because uh, that camp in Portugal, definitely COVID affected that. Yeah. Um, big. yeah so yeah, that sucks, but that that's crazy, man. I don't think a lot of people can do that. Yeah. But um, yeah, uh, things started to pick up for me until later on, for sure. Because I remember, like back when we would play y'all, I was in. I mean, I was doing okay, but I wasn't really up there to where everybody was looking at me. It was more like later on, until I signed with San Antonio, where things really started to pick up for me, for sure. Yeah, it's yeah, fun, man. Let's get into a little bit more serious, though. Um. Someone says, shout out Marcus. He says, what's the biggest challenge um, that you faced so far in your career? And like, how did you overcome it? Yeah. Um, I think, well, honestly, I'd, I'd probably pick the moment where I went to Europe and trained with Byron um, and a little bit with Barca. I think I was there for like a day. I trained with Barca for one day and oh, I got man, injured. Wow. And so that just, that just, uh, uh, like ended off everything from there because they saw I got injured. It was my meniscus. I was out for like a month and a half. I had to get surgery. So that kind of just like canceled that opportunity for me. And I just had to obviously recover. And it was tough because I was, for me, from there, from since I signed with San Antonio, it was just like the slow, like it was steady, just going up, 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 you know, reaching new levels. And um, that happened. I was like, damn, like that was my only opportunity. That was my one chance to, to, that's what I was thinking when it happened. But obviously now I think I'm like, I can get back to uh, back there if, if, you know, if I keep working. So I think that was definitely a tough moment for me in my, in my career, for sure. You know, my brother, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Playing with you in uh, USL and now as a sociedad. And uh, I think uh, the other USL young player of the year nominee, Diego Luna was out there trialing too in Europe. So obviously the quality of those three guys is there. Um, does that like, does that ring with you and motivate you to be like, yeah, I can definitely do it. Like, cause you mentioned that you thought, okay, my one chance was over. I got injured. Boom. But now that you're back again and you're playing well, do you think to yourself now it's like, okay, now's my moment. Like, it's good. Like I can do it. Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, I see I, it's uh there is some competitive competitiveness in there with, with those other guys. Cause obviously your brother, one young player of the year, dude balled out last year and uh, Diego Luna, um, dude also balled out with El Paso. El Paso is another great team in the league. And, um, yeah, you just, you just, it's, it's hard not to compare yourself with other people. You know, it's hard not to do that. I try not to, I try to just stay in my lane, focus on myself. Um, but yeah, I think I've, I've seen so many people, you know, I've played against and seen, uh, my age, you know, make it there. And I, you ask yourself, yeah, I can, why not me? You know, I can do that too. Um, and it's just having that mentality that, you know, I, I'm big on like manifestation with kind of that kind of stuff. Like since I was there, I'm, I told my mom, like, hey, I'm a, I'm going to get you a nice house when I'm older, you know, all this kind of stuff. So I like to manifest and, and do all that stuff since I, I've been doing it since I was little. So I think it's it's just believing in that and uh, just putting that into into existence and working towards that. Yeah, man, I, I love what you said there. But uh, I mean, we're so young and it's crazy like you you get these opportunities and you think like yeah this is my one shot like today is the day like a certain game you're like yeah this game like it means everything like if i do well it changes my life and if i do bad it you know it changes it a different way but you know, we're so young some of these players that we see we watch on tv week in week out in the premier league and in the bundesliga i mean they're making these teams when they're 26 like jamie vardy what a story like players like that that i mean we're so young we have time but obviously I mean, we live in a culture now where everything, everybody wants things now and they want it quick and with terms of everything. And, uh, you know, it just doesn't work like that for everybody. And uh, I think that's definitely yeah. something I can attest to well. And so is Johan. Just uh, like you said, staying on your own path. And I mean, 
what's wrong with giving somebody their roses? If they do something good, you, you bring them up, you're, you're boys with them, you, you congratulate them, but you just stay focused on yourself and that's the best way to get there. So I think you got your head on screwed right, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with that, man, for sure. Yeah, that's that's crazy, Zan. I agree with that a thousand percent. I mean, you look at, you know, not everyone's a Gio Reyna, stuff like that, people like that. I mean, Tanner, you, you signed later than me and now your CDI, like I took a little bit of a different route. I signed into an academy of a big club and then now... Maybe I, I took a step to the side, and but I'm still on my way to, you know, playing first thing in a top five league. You know what I mean? So everyone has their own path. That's the great thing. That's the beautiful thing about football. There's so much talent. So I think, um, yeah, but you, you don't have nothing to worry about. But um, before I ask you to define success, um, I don't know if you want to talk about, like, if there is any interest. I don't know if you can talk about it or you want to give us an exclusive or anything that's going on, you know, that, you know, might give us a scoop. It's up to you. Um, I don't know if you have anything like that going on or you just kind of waiting to see if your agent gets you anything or, or what's the situation there? Yeah, it's just, it's just that, man. What you just said, he's just waiting to see what, what comes up, what, cause obviously I'm still, I mean, I'm on contract right now still. I got, they, uh, San Antonio picked up my options. So if I were to leave, someone would have to put in an offer. And right now she's waiting and seeing, uh, you know, who offers me the best, uh, I guess more playing time and, and uh, where I see myself doing better in. So it's just waiting and seeing what comes up and, and where I could go, you know. So as of right now, you're just wanna, getting ready for this. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Ted. I want to add one thing. Like, uh, we talk about Europe and we talk about MLS, but would you ever see yourself uh, going to Liga Max and playing in uh, in Mexico? Um, They've asked me that too. And I, I, I think I see it kind of the same as MLS, honestly. I think uh, I grew up watching Mex uh, the Mexican League um, for since I was little. So, um, but I've always seen it also like just MLS because players that play in, in La Liga Mexicana or Liga MX, like they, I think they're just like any of us who over here in the U.S. were planning on eventually getting to Europe. So I, um, nice. like I've said before, I think the sooner I get to Europe, I think the better. Um, but obviously I have a lot of respect for both the leagues because I grew up watching them. So who do you support in Liga MX? Chivas. I used to support them more now, not so much because I haven't really been keeping up as much. But yeah, I used to always support Chios, heavy Chios. Interesting, because another John, person you? asked us. I am Cruz Azul fan. My dad is a Cruz Azul fan. Is there some beef going on right now? Nah, nah. Chivas is the biggest yeah. club, but Cruz Azul is big too. But we're better in general. Yeah, Cruz Azul, um, yeah, for sure, better right now. Yeah, but Cruz Azul was like cursed for a lot of years, and just this past yeah. May. They broke like a 30 year drought of title and they finally won, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> but yeah, going into, going into a question that, yeah, going into someone, uh, another question that someone asked that ties into that. They asked Mexico or US, if you get the chance right now, both the Olympic squads call you in, you know? Yeah. What's the word? That's tough, man, honestly, because I've always supported Mexico like growing up. I'm not gonna lie, I always supported Mexico growing up. When they would play, I'd always be rooting for Mexico. But now, you know, seeing what US is uh, building on, and you know, obviously it's shown in the past few games they played against each other. It's um, for me, I think it's it's like I'm leaning towards US, but also I want to keep my options open with Mexico because my heart's telling me Mexico. You know, my heart's telling me Mexico. But um, yeah, it's it's a tough one, man. It's really tough. Yo, honestly, that it's for me watching players like you decide Mexico or U.S. Like your brother as well, John, and you as well. Man, I I don't know how you decide, bro. Like, because as an American and only American, like I I hate playing against. Like I hate Mexican team. Like, I don't hate Mexico as a country, but like I hate the Mexican soccer team. Like every time we play, it's like I want USA to win so bad. Women's, men's, darts, arrows. I don't care what it is. Like I want to win so bad. So if you had to decide. Which one, man? I, I mean, I, yeah, it's, I always think about the players I have to decide, man. It's tough. Yeah. I think what I have to come, like, if I had, you know, both teams, like, right here and they told me, okay, pick, I have no idea. I think I have to just decide when, if that moment were, were to come like that. But, no, nah, man, no idea right now, honestly. Yeah. It's it's crazy because you got to, like, you have what your heart, like, what you say, what your heart's telling you, then what your mind's telling you, then what opportunities are there and stuff like that. Yeah. And you always have the media and stuff like that. Um. So I've, I've, I'm seeing it firsthand with my brother. It's actually crazy. And he's yo so young. You know, you don't, yeah. sometimes you don't want to like make that decision yet, which is crazy. But um, yeah, yeah bro, it's all about players ahead. as well. 
Exactly. Now, I was going to say, it's, it's all about players. Like, I mean, if if they yeah. put Christian Pulisic as a 10, like, mate, like, you, <laughs> you're never going to play in the U.S. Like, it don't <laughs> matter. Like, yeah, you got to know what you're <laughs> like, yeah. there's no chance. Yeah, Pulisic, obviously, dude, so versatile, too. Like, what they're doing with him at Chelsea is crazy, man. Like, he can play anywhere, yeah. it looks like. Yeah. But. But yeah, let's move on. Sorry, John. No, no, that's that's a great point, bro. Like, like I said, like the opportunities, you know, you have to look at, you know, the depth in each each country. But also, obviously, you know, one country cannot have any, for example, tens. But then if they never call you up, it's like, you know what, you know, what's going on? So yeah. it's not like you can't always control that. But um, anyway, our signature thing here is success defined. We define success with all of our guests and stuff like that. And it's always so awesome because they always have different answers. So what do you think is your definition of success? And do you think you've achieved success yet? Or do you think you're on your way to uh, achieving it? No, I think I'm on, I'm on my way to achieving it. But I think success is just being, uh, obviously, I mean, I think it's something that everybody always says, but it's being or loving what you're doing and just being comfortable if it were to end. You know, I think that's success. If, if you're loving what you're doing and you've gotten to a point where if, okay, if it stops now, like you'll still be comfortable where you are and we won't have to worry, you know, uh, financially or losing anybody. I think that that success, once you get to that point, you know, um, uh, you won't, you won't, you know, nothing bad will come from it. If you were to, you know, say like whatever it is, if you were retired from whatever you're doing, you know, what's that point for you though? What is that point for me? Yeah. Like what, what do you mean? Like, what's that point for you where you say, Okay, I did this. So if I oh, retire now, like, I'm yeah. happy. When the once when like, I get to the point uh to where obviously I love what I'm doing now, but I think once I get to the ideal situation that I've always dreamed of since I was young, um say whoever wherever it is in your idol, because that's why where, where I see it in Europe, um with whoever it would be with, um being just good financially and and um you know, being able to help everyone around me that I love and, you know, keeping them safe from, from anything like that. And, um, just keeping everyone close that you love. And, um, as long as I'm there doing what I love with the, with the sport, um, and I'm helping everybody around me, bringing them with me. Um, I think that that's the point where I'll be like, okay, yeah, I've, I've made it, I've, I've succeeded. So you like think, that. uh, you think money ties into success? I think people say no, but I think it does. Honestly, I think it does because I I want to help as much as I can everybody around me. Um, I don't want them like my mom, my dad. I want to retire them eventually, and I want to you know I, I just want to I want them to not to worry about anything like that anymore. So because my dad's been working since he was like fourteen, you know, on his own. So it's like. I guess to a point, I just think I'm like, nah, he needs to like chill. Like, he needs to, you know, rest now. Like, let, let, like me and my brother, um, let us take care of that now. Like you, you've done too much for, for us. I think, That's I think awesome. it, it does honestly a little bit, at least a little bit, you know, cause yeah. Yeah, no, that's not a bad thing. I think everyone, it kind of depends on how you're raised too. You know, some people might say, oh, money's not that important. But some people might say, like, you know, yeah, money is important. You know what I mean? So it just always yeah. varies. And that's, that's the that's the great thing about that question. But um, I think it's important on making you happy. It's more just on helping others around you. I think that's what it is. It's not just me. Because people always say, like, money doesn't make you happy. And I agree with that. I don't think it would. Obviously, I'm not there. I'm not at that level. But I'm like, I, I could imagine, like, my, I think I see money as just, you know, just helping you be comfortable and, and you know, the, the people you love around you, you know, help, help them as well. I like that. Um, yeah. So just, just a couple more questions here, some random questions that we got from the fans that someone says, if you had to eat only one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Probably. I have no idea. One food. Yeah, one food. I don't know. I love pasta, man. Pasta? I, yeah. I thought you were going to say a Mexican bring it, bring it. <laughs> Come Mexican over to Italy, bro. <laughs> nah, I love pasta, man. A Mexican dish, I could probably go mm, enchiladas. Enchiladas. Your mom's a good cook or no? 
yeah she cooks like every day man that's what makes it harder because i'm out i still live here and like <laughs> be cooking all crazy mexican foods like every day and she gets like offended if i don't eat eat that because i have to like kind of take care of myself because she makes menudo and she loves chile rellenos i was mexican dishes right and it's like so tough because i like, come home and she's making that and i have to like either make my own kind of food or just go and, and, and get myself something a little more healthier than that I mean, be grateful while you have it because, you know, once you, once you, once you, once you come into Europe, bro, it's, it's Once different. you come to Europe, bro, there ain't no Mexican food here, bro. There isn't, man. Like, uh, like tacos. I had, I had a birria tacos. I don't know if y'all have had birria tacos, but those of course, are, man. Dude, man, like, honestly, if, yeah, if, if I leave, if I'm leaving, then I'm for sure going to get some, some tacos before I head out. For you got sure. to, bro. You got to. But, um, for sure. Before bro. we wrap it up, um. Is there anyone you would like to see us interview on Jump Chat? I don't know if you have any any friends, any anyone like that. You would like, oh, I think you'd be a good guest. Um, let me see. You don't even have be, to know them. Just anyone. I, mean, I think uh, Jacobo. Do you know Jacobo Reyes? I do know. I was talking to him the other day. Yeah, yeah. I think. Have y'all had him on? No, we haven't. Nah, he uh, cause uh. Yeah, I've, I've, I've known him because I went to – when I was planning on going to college, I, he was my uh, – what do you call it? My host or my – because he was the one helping me show around campus when he was in Portland. You went to UP. Yeah, I did. Bro, I was committed to UP. Yeah, I was going to commit. I was between them and NC State, and I ended up committing to NC State. But, yeah, I was he was the guy that was helping me around and show me around campus, and I stayed with him too. But, That's yeah. crazy. Was Ray still there? Um, yeah, he was. Really, yeah, yeah, he was. Funny, that's man. crazy. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, all right. Well, um, y'all are in a similar situation, low key, because I know he's trying to trying to leave Monterrey, um, or that's what he's told me. So I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, yeah. but but yeah, bro. I mean, um, what's your Instagram and your Twitter so that they can the they, the people can go show love? Uh, Jose underscore Gallegos seventeen on Twitter and Instagram. All right, say no more. Is there anything, any any last words that you kind of wanted to say or or maybe any advice to any young kids that may be watching? No, I man, I think I just appreciate y'all having me on. I think uh, you know, I know we I played against Johan. Tanner, I've been I've been following you, man. Uh big fan for sure, both of y'all, and I wish y'all the best. Thank you, brother. No, it, thank you for appreciate coming it. on. This was this was fun for sure. And I learned a couple of things that I didn't know already, like the UP thing, and I didn't even know we had played against each other when we were little. So that's crazy, yeah. but um, obviously, wishing you all the best for 2022. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Go show Jose love. Be um, be alert to his next move because it's coming. Um, like, share, and subscribe. And like we always say, um, go find your own success. Deuces.